Oh, hey, uh, nice to see you again. Um, what I want to do right now is a second option for how could I solve the mass of the sun. Based on, in the first video, I worked out already this net force on the earth is equal to mass times acceleration of the earth, but the force, the net force on the earth, it's just gravity, so from the sun, so big G times mass of sun times mass of earth, mass of earth over how far they are squared equals mass of earth times acceleration of the earth, but the acceleration of the earth is approximately centripetal, and also I know that the speed of the earth is 2 pi times radius over period, keeping in mind that this path is approximately circular. So instead of just cramming numbers in immediately and churning through those numbers, I want to be a little bit more patient. And I'm going to solve in terms of algebra. And then after I do some algebra, then I'll come up with the mass of the sun. And there are multiple reasons why I might choose to do this. Um, one reason is well, it means less button mashing on my calculator sometimes. And another reason, actually, sometimes, and this is definitely one of those cases, then if you shove numbers in right away, then you might miss something that's maybe just a little bit awesome and maybe just a little bit elegant. And we're going to see that in just a couple minutes. Now, what I want to do then is I want to solve for the mass of the sun. Now, in order to do that, um, I'm going to do a little, a little bit of algebra, but before I can do algebra with this red piece of math, I'm going to need to be squared in my red piece of math. So I've got, as you see with the green there, v equals 2 pi r over period. So that means that v squared equals 4 times pi squared times radius squared divided by period squared. And that's what I'm going to substitute in in that red equation. So now I've got big G times the mass of the sun divided by how far apart they are squared equals 4. You know what? I'll do this in green just so you can more easily see my substitution. 4 times pi squared times r squared divided by, in my denominator, I've already got an r in the denominator from speed squared over radius times t squared. That's in my denominator based on this work right here. There's where that t squared is coming from. So I've got this math. Now I can clean this up a little bit. Um, for one thing, on the right side I've got r squared here and I've got r here, so I can do a little bit of division with those. And so I can just divide out r, you're gone, square, you're gone. Also, I can multiply this r squared over to the other side of the equation. And so when I multiply that r squared over, then multiplying this over, now it's going to be in the numerator. So I'm going to have r times r squared. So when I write that out, I end up with big G times the mass of the sun equals 4 times pi squared times r cubed now, all divided by t squared. And if I want to solve for the mass of the sun, then I'm just going to need to divide both sides by that big G number. And this now, a couple things about that. I can substitute in numbers now for the mass of the sun, but before I do that, I want to just notice, first of all, there was nothing special about Earth there. And I could have done this exact same bit of math for any object other than Earth. I could have done it for Mars, I could have done it for Neptune, I could have done it for... Venus, I could have done it for anything that orbits the sun. It's just that I would end up with, for some other object that orbits the sun, I would have a different r number and a different t number. But this would be true then for any object orbiting the sun. 
Um, and I could do the exact same work for any object, say, that orbits the Earth, except then I would have mass of Earth on the left side, and the R and the T would be whatever things orbiting the Earth. So this gives me a general kind of function for here's how I can figure out the mass of something that gets orbited. And so that's kind of cool. Something else that I noticed that's kind of cool about all this is that I have an R cubed and I have a T squared. Now what I remember from Kepler's third law is that if I take an R cubed over a T squared, for any planet that orbits the sun, then I get that same constant number. And, oh wow, actually that constant number would be, if you rearrange that math, that same constant number would be the mass of the sun divided by 4 pi squared. And I just realized that I made a mistake over here. There should have been a g there all along. And so I'm going to have to add that big g um, when I move it over, it's going to be up here. But now that is the constant. That big G times massive sun over 4 pi squared, that is that constant. And so actually Kepler's third law, Kepler's third law came about just by Kepler looking at, okay, what's the pattern of this data? But Newton laws of Newton's second law of motion and Newton's law of universal gravitation, when I use those together, then it actually gives me a reason to see why Kepler's third law is true. And that's kind of cool. So anyway, if I want to actually finish this question and answer, OK, what's the mass of the sun? Then what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to multiply 4 times pi squared times 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. That gets cubed divided by big G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Units, units, units. I know there are no fun for that thing. Times that period squared. That's in seconds. And when I do that math, then I do in fact get for a mass of the sun, I get 2.01 times 10 to the 30th power in kilograms. So there's that. Um, and I hope that you can see why conceptually I might choose to wait until the very, very end before I stick in those numbers. Thanks for sticking with me.